Hey guys, Rick Denham here with Holy Moly Outdoors. As we just covered in our last video on the high water coho fishing techniques and our tributaries that are my favorite to do, we're going to talk now about from the boat because high water coho provides a lot of opportunity for those that uh, want to go search and find out of a boat when you can do the opportunity for it. So what I like to do in these situations is first off, you want to have that water on the drop because usually a rising river makes it for a lot more difficult navigation wise on a river and for your safety. You don't want to be anchored up on a spot 20,000 CFS, have a giant log come down the river and take out your anchor line and possibly flip your boat. It's very dangerous in that and I would recommend do not go out when it's that bad. So what I'm talking about though, high water coho, is when that river is back after cresting and on the drop, which it should be soon, um, you can go out there and put yourself in some high percentage places and really target these coho as they're transitioning up the river. So what I want to cover then is just a couple very productive techniques. Um, for me, plugs are my first one and that's what I'll start with and then side drift in bait. So with plugs, we'll first start with the gear that I like to run on the uh, terminal end. So I have here a Velocity Salmon Extreme Series which is the 9 foot medium light 6 to 15. This is my favorite all time rod that you guys have probably seen quite a bit of in my other videos for sockeye, for ocean fishing this one does it all. I love it for coho trolling with plugs because you get a really nice soft tip action so when those fish slam that plug those hooks immediately aren't going to come out. You have a lot of opportunity to load that thing up and they really get stuck so it's a great trolling rod for plugs and I have it paired up with a Velocity Recon in the um, 151 and I love the left hand retrieve model Spooled up with 15 pound test, this thing is a fish killer. So I always then, after the end of my main line, I will tie, we'll see if I can show it up here, just your normal size barrel swivel. This happens to be, I believe, a size seven. And uh, what I do then is I will run main line to the barrel swivel here, and then I will run a leader section, probably of 15 pound or so, uh, maybe 12 to the plug and I put a dual lock on there because it makes it really easy to transition from different colors if you are having something one side of the boat's hotter than the other um, or it's easy just enough to switch out but having that swivel up above helps keep your line twist down and frankly in the fall like this when there's a lot of water through and especially the first rain I should say as well you have a lot of debris in the water so there's a possibility of having you know leaves and whatnot coming down your line that swivel acts kind of as a blockade to help keep that off your plug doesn't always work but it definitely helps so I'd recommend putting a swivel on there and when we start talking about plugs themselves I would say there's two categories you're gonna have your wide wobble really nice larger size profile plugs like your maglips, your flatfish, your quickfish so the bigger size banana kind of plugs or you're going to have your more compact brad's wigglers, fatfish from yakima bait those kinds of ones so i always have those both in my boat but it just depends on where i'm at situation wise how fast the current is and uh, kind of what the clarity is of what i'm going to throw but the last few years especially for our coho fishing maglips have produced excellent not to say that the Brad's Wigglers haven't, they definitely are still catching fish, but the Maglips have really, for me, been kind of what I have my go-to. So I'm going to show you guys just a little bit of what I got in my box for them. There's two sizes in this higher water conditions for the Maglips that really are good to have in your box. Let's talk first then about more of that high, high water. You're just off a crest. Maybe you got a good spot where you know the fish are holding up. Uh, these new 4.0 size maglips were going to be great for those situations where you got 
a little bit higher, maybe a little bit deeper water, you can get off the inside bends and go really target some of these fish. And I would say my favorite color for the Yakima bait happens to be the good old boy and the black tiger stripe, but I don't have it in the 4.0 4 size, but the cowgirl there is another killer. Same with the green monkey there. So really, the 4.0 is just a bigger, larger profile, works really good in that situation. Then we go down just your standard sizes that I love throwing. And I'm usually either anchored up or I'm trolling up river. And when it's really high and coming down, a lot of times I'm more anchored up with a larger plug like that 4.0. But if we start to get the ideal drop and things start coming back into shape pretty good, we start then getting a situation where that trolling up river and downstream is extremely effective. And where some of my best success honestly has been at. And if I can get this plug out, I'll show you guys my absolute favorite color. Happens to be tangled with everything. I'll just show it to you that way. That is my go-to color for the last few years. This one in particular has a uh, all the notches on there. I don't know if, you, if it'll focus up to see it right. But uh, this one itself has 15 coho alone and that was one season. So I really, really love this color. Done very well on that one. Um, varieties of colors work. I'm not saying that's the only plug to have. Your pinks, your purples work really well. Your chartreuses, your silvers. You just kind of play it by where the day and honestly, what the fish tell you, because that at the end of the day is where your most success comes from. Don't get stuck up on one color alone just because it caught fish before. Change it up till the fish tell you differently. So those are the Yakima bait maglet plugs. Then we'll talk about those smaller profile baits like the Brad's Wigglers. And let's see, if I had a couple of choices of colors, the last few years, you really can't go wrong with just your standard red black herringbone there. Very effective on our upper end systems, as well as your green fire tigers. Very, very good. One of my favorite personally is this purple and chartreuse one. But I've caught fish pretty much on all of them. The BW29 right there, it's like a purple pink, is very effective as well. Just a smaller profile gives you a little bit something different. And uh, I find when the water is finally almost, I would say, back into shape and has better clarity, these can be really, really good on those fish that have a lot of pressure over the top of them. The Maglips, because they've came on the scene in the last few years, have gained a lot of popularity, and I really love throwing those too. So I have one rod always running a Maglip, and one always running either a Fat Fish or one of those Brad Wigglers, just so we can uh, have something different in the boat, and then we'll let the fish tell us what's going to happen. Um, and speaking of the Fat Fish, that would be the last one that I will show you guys. Just like that. This one dives a little bit deeper than the Brad's Wiggler. Has some of the great same colors that the other Maglips have. Um, just as all more or less preference to what the fish are looking at on the day. Some, but a lot of these colors, it's the greens, the pinks, the chartreuse, and orange are what really are going to be effective for you. So that would be my pulling plugs. And if I'm going to anchor up, I'm looking, like I said, for that inside current seam bend and I can just find a travel lane and sit there and wait and let the fish come to me. A couple years ago, a buddy of mine, we were floating down the river, back trolling plugs. He had a maglip on and the visibility was about two feet, if we are lucky. I think it was closer to about maybe a foot. And he back trolled uh, one of those maglip 3.5s and that silver red herringbone right into the face of a 12 pound coho and that thing absolutely hammered it. So. 
it's a lot of fun when you're trolling or even sitting on anchor you can have your coffee your heater on there and uh, just enjoy time on the water and sometimes it can be very very productive so the last part we we're going to talk about was bait and so bait has its purpose when that water is still higher but coming back into shape those fish have traveled up river gone and set, found a spot that they can hunker down and wait for that water to subside they're clean you know their gills up they're all kind of uh, i would say more or less in survival mode when all that debris is coming down so bait can really excel once that water is just creeping into shape maybe a little bit um, more dirty and you then look at an opportunity that bait can just outperform everything and a few years ago we had a super good uh, plug bite early on in the season when those fish were coming in fresh when they finally shot up with the rain they came up to the upper ends of the river system and it was just bait 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 show I mean it was so cool to see and I think you can look back at some of my videos and see that where there you can just chomp on those eggs before you set the hook and it is a blast so when I get to that point if we're just either anchored up pitching bait or side drifting it's generally the same just like you would for steelhead fishing this happens to be a G Loomis GL3 uh, 1141 happens to be along with the IMX my favorite side drifting rods and I just got it paired up this one happens to be a Cabela's Prodigy 30 size reel with 10 pound Iser and uh, I'm also running a Dave's Tangle Free this happens to be the quarter ounce size. You can vary it up. A lot of guys will side drift with slinkies or pencil lead, but in the last uh, few years, especially that I've been since the Dave Tangle Free staff, I've really fallen in love with those because they don't hang up as much. It's really a great, uh, great product to try out. And for the other end, we'll get this situated for you guys. You're looking at just your typical double hook setup combination. Now these are pre-tied rigs and uh, you can do them yourself. You can change the hooks out. These are size fours. Sometimes with the coho I like bumping it up to a size two. Just depends. Uh, you can get away with fours. Sometimes though they bend out a little bit. So what it is is just a bait loop here. You push that line up and the, those eggs will go right into that bait loop. You cinch that down the back hook's exposed and you're ready to fish. So typically, you know, you got your cured eggs, either store bought or you're curing your own, cutting them up at that point into a quarter size chunk and you just cast it out and let those fish chomp on them and it's, it's a lot of fun. Now, like what I've shown here, got some nice cured eggs. Um, that's typically what I'm using, but in a pinch, you can get away with using the store-bought. Heck, I mean, I'm going to even play around because <laughs> I still have some of this laying around. Some of these Potski row packs um, and use some of that on our uh, fish, but I'm not really starving for bait. I have tons left over from the Humpy Run, so typically um, that's pretty much it for right now. I mean, this is the fun time of the year. We finally get the rain that we're looking for. So all those fish that have been sitting in the lower river and maybe even some that are in the salt water, those bigger fish get drawn in with this water and they're gonna shoot right up to the uh, upper ends of the river systems. And this is a great opportunity for those guys in the boat to go chase them. So hope this helps guys. Good luck out in the water and uh, go slay some fish. Take care and fish on. Boom!